my top five finals in the past 10 years. Again, dating back to 2014, that was the second matchup between the Spurs and the Heat. A little bit of a reference for you guys here. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. Let's get it. Let's get into it. All right. Coming in at number five, I have the 2022 finals between the Celtics and the Warriors. When I was trying to do this list to put out the five spot, there were a lot of limited options other than 2022. Could I choose between... 2014, no, most of the games were blowouts, although the Spurs displayed an excellent brand of basketball. The KD Warriors series, 2017-2018, hell no, two of the worst series of all time. This, the finals last year between Nuggets and the, the Heat, absolutely not. That was a horrible finals as well, too. So... By default, we're going to put 2022 in here. Despite that, and with the series being basically over after game four, really, and zero close games throughout the, that finals, all the winning teams won by double digits in every single game, there was still a decent amount of memorable moments. Obviously, you had Steph's game four performance, sadly, at the Garden to tie the series up 2-2. Man, I got mad flashbacks talking about this. I don't I don't want to damn. I still got to, but I don't feel like talking about it. But game 4 Steph, the probably the greatest game of his career. I thought it was the game the greatest game of his career. Legacy defining moment and just to witness really the Warriors stamping themselves as a legit dynasty. After all the the narratives about oh KD, you know KD th- those those chips are fake. KD was the main reason why this was a dynasty to begin with, and for them to completely shut off the noise and win that as well was pretty cool to watch as a neutral. Unfortunate for me, especially, but cool to watch as a neutral. And also you had Jordan Poole splashing. Those buzzer beater shots from half court, that was kind of cool. But obviously for me, I thought that was annoying as hell. I don't like Jordan Poole still for that to this day. But, hey, he got money and I don't. So, it doesn't matter. Let's move on. At number four, we got 2019 between the Raptors and the Warriors. I think we don't give this series enough credit for being very entertaining and I understand the Warriors were obviously very banged up you had KD not even starting this series and when he came back in game five he had the unfortunate Achilles season ending injury which that's pretty bad you had Clay his ACL tear in game six that was awful as well Boogie was banged up so the perception from some people yeah, I can, I can understand where they're coming from with the series not being entertaining, really. But if you really look at it from game to game, minus games three and four in, uh, when they played in Golden State, one and two, five and six, all bangers. All are very close, all went down to the wire, and a lot of very clutch shots are being hit. I vividly remember... The Clay Thompson clutch three at the well towards the end of Game Five to put them up by six. I thought that was a great play to look back on, and we had a lot of great plays too as well. Like Siakam, he was coming out in Game One, the opener. He led the team in scoring, if I can recall. Kawhi obviously throughout the finals was brilliant as he was during that entire postseason run, clinching that as one of the greatest runs in the for individual player in playoff history throughout the course of the NBA. And also you had Fred Van Vliet, his clutch buckets, which with his story being an an undrafted guy, for him to pull through for his team in the end of a lot of games to get a lot of clutch buckets down the stretch was very cool to see. 
And I also want to mention the atmosphere, especially for Toronto, because all the Toronto games, watching it and seeing the loud intensity of the crowd, Jurassic Park outside, it it was brilliant to see. And that was really special for a team in their first finals, a team from Canada, a whole different country, <laughs> you know, get, getting that whole finals experience for them and ultimately winning it. Moving on, we head to the top three, and we start off with the 2015 Finals, the very start of the Warriors' dynasty. The Cavs' injuries were still very unfortunate, but ultimately the series, the series was still very competitive, with Games 4 and 5 being the only blowouts. Lots of great memories to look back on. Steph tying, uh, I believe, Game 2, if I can remember game two, to send the game to overtime was a great moment. Delvin Dova, Matthew Delvin Dova, his clutch defense on Steph. And I remember, <laughs> obviously I remember and a lot of people remember all the narratives about him being a Curry stopper, which was very fun to look back on. Obviously that didn't really happen. But, you know, it's still, still very funny to look back on. And obviously, you had LeBron James leading his team to a historical performance despite all the injuries. Ha- having guys like Tim- Timofey Mozgov starting in the lineup. And for him to still being able to push this series to six games. Having a 2-1 series lead at one point was pretty cool to see. So I think three would be a great spot here on this list. All right, moving on to the top two. We're going to start off with second place, and we got the 2021 NBA Finals. I really wish with all the COVID stuff going on, it would have been taking place in full crowds, full stadiums, without all the mandates as well. But for the time that it was, that's what we had to deal with. And despite all of that stuff, it was still a classic. It was still a phenomenal series to look back on. I mean, you had the Bucks unexpectedly coming back 2-0 down. Everybody thought it was over. Everybody thought Chris Paul would get his first ring as a player. Everybody thought the book would be considered as that one of the newest faces of the NBA. And that didn't happen. That whole narrative completely changed and ultimately Giannis and his story being you know being worked from the ground up being this scrawny Greek kid coming into the states to hoop and for him to completely switch it around and win a chip for a franchise that's that never won anything since the Kareem and Oscar Robertson days was very cool to see and for Giannis especially I don't think we as a people give him enough credit for his performances in that finals, especially from games four through six. Just the amount of iconic moments he had. The game four block on Aiden in crunch time. The ability to stop and recover on D book in the pick and roll. And for him to go back to the painted area and to contest Aiden's two-handed dunk attempt in that stage of the game, was one of the greatest defensive plays of all time in NBA history. And in Game 5, you had the N1 dunk to seal the game on, on CP3. Shout out Drew Holiday for getting the steal on, on Devin Booker to set that up. And in Game 6, the closeout, one of the greatest closeout games we've seen from a player in finals history. Setting up a 40 ball, 14 rebounds as well, hitting all of the clutch free throws at the end to wrap it up for the Bucks. It was phenomenal. And with how Giannis' career has conspired since the finals win, I think people have forgotten how special this series was, especially when you factor in the amount of injury luck the Bucks had to get to that position, which that's a bad narrative going against them in, the, in Milwaukee. But just looking back... That was just a phenomenal performance. And especially when in the Hawks series, 
I don't think people talk about this enough more. He hyperextended his knee in game one, I believe, game one or game two. If you look at the replay, his knee was completely crooked. It was like it was like a bendy straw. It, it, it was a nasty injury. And for him to recover from that and produce one of the greatest performances we've ever seen from a player in history to so solidify his all-time status, it was a phenomenal effort. Very phenomenal effort. And to wrap it up, obviously 2016, I don't got to linger on this for too long. Kyrie's dagger, LeBron's block, both in Game 7, two of the greatest plays in NBA history. The the two-man game between Bron and Kyrie, the greatest two-man performance probably all-time in Finals history, and the only 3-1 comeback in Finals history. Like, what more can you say? Just one, one takeaway I want to add was in Game 7, down the stretch, I wish LeBron got that converted boom on Draymond to seal the game. I, I really wish that that, that would have happened. That would have been a huge, a huge, huge cherry on top of the cake to wrap up the greatest comeback in NBA history like that. That would have been phenomenal to, to see and witness. But, hey, for what we got, was pretty great in of itself. And that's why it's at the very top of this list.